Hello and welcome to Market Wrap, an initiative by ICICI Direct. And I have with me, Mr. Pankaj Pandey, Head Research, ICICI Direct. Welcome, Pankaj. Good afternoon, Geetu. Smart recovery in the markets, the Nifty gaining around uh, 4%, Sensex up nearly 3.8%, Bank Nifty up 3%, CNX 500 up 4%, small caps up nearly 3.8%. So truncated week, but good recovery. What really led to this recovery and what pulled the markets up? So largely what we have seen is that there is a broad-based recovery in the market this week. Uh, and uh, there are a couple of factors for that. Uh, so you had auto numbers today. Largely, uh, uh, the CV cycle uh, looks like has turned around the corner uh, month on month. Uh, there is a decent or a good double-digit kind of a growth uh, in uh, CV players. What we have seen, Tractor continues to do well. Tractor has been sort of doing well for quite some time. Mm -hmm. uh, this continues to do well, even Maruti, uh, while the growth is in single digits, month on month basis, but uh, the numbers are uh, uh, quite high in terms of uh, contrary to our, our expectation. Then on top of it, uh, the GST uh, numbers were quite robust. I think all that is sort of pointing towards a very robust economy. Mm -hmm. And I think globally also things have sort of turned positive, especially from the perspective that uh, US is uh, going to sort of undertake uh, one of uh, uh, the biggest uh, infra spends of, uh, in excess of $2 trillion. And I think that has helped uh, metal uh, stocks uh, uh, quite a bit. And I think uh, so largely across sectors, we are seeing good amount of buying. Uh, and I think I'll not be surprised if uh, market touches 15,100 levels uh, over the next one week. I think banking is the only sort of a laggard, which is sort of not really doing well. I think uh, since March uh, 23rd, 24th, the banking index is uh, nearly at the same level. Uh, but uh, overall, this is a sort of a good thing to happen because uh, uh, if you are seeing gyration in terms of sectoral leadership changing mm -hmm. and along with better market breadth, I think that sort of uh, uh, pushes the market uh, on the downside, uh, whereas uh, it opens the upside for the markets, and which is where we expect uh, markets uh, will touch uh, 15,100 kind of a levels in the coming week. Uh, best performing index, the metal index, it's up more than 12% uh, this entire week, truncated week, but yes, brilliant performance put in by metals. Tata Steel is up 23%, GS Blue Steel is up 16%, Hindalco up 10%, GSPL up 21%, Nalco up 10%. So what should one do? I mean, it's it's not, you know, everybody has been saying that metals performed really well in last one year's time since there has been uh, talks of economic recovery now happening. So what uh, is it a, a right time to enter these talks or uh, one should wait for a correction to happen and then uh, and, you know plan a, a re-entry into these talks? So ironically, uh, Geetu, we have not seen uh, the kind of a correction one would have expected. I think even this week also we have seen uh, metal index gaining about closer to 8 to 9 odd percent. I think uh, uh, global prices continue to be sort of a trend. I mean, compared to last year, uh, say HRC prices from 35, 36,000 uh, um, uh, are nearly uh, going to touch uh, 60,000 rupees a ton. And that is sort of re resonating in terms of numbers also. Uh, you look at the EBITDA per ton for some of the key players, like, uh, uh, say, for example, Tata Steel, uh, 20,000 rupees per ton. That number used to be about 11,000, 12,000 rupees per ton. So, so that way, I think uh, those higher prices are translating into better EBITDA per ton for most of the players. And on, on top of it, if uh, you have news like uh, US uh, planning a big infrastructure spend, uh, I think it will have a positive rub off on all metal prices. And which is why not only Indian stocks, even global other stocks have also sort of inched up. Mm -hmm. Uh, so it looks like that uh, uh, this uh, rally is uh, expected to sort of sustain, given the fact that uh, you have a lot more uh, uh, spends coming up uh, both domestically and globally, uh, So which will keep the prices elevated. And what it does is that if these prices sustain for a year or two, the balance sheet profile for a lot of these companies will improve. And mind you, these companies uh, have been undertaking a decent amount of uh, CAPEX, have been uh, participating very actively in the m &S side. Uh, so from that perspective, I think it's a sort of a, uh, uh, they're sort of uh, doing well in a uh, cycle, which is uh, turning around the corner. So that way, I think uh, metal uh, continues to do well. Uh, so I think all your tier one names have done well. But I think uh, we like some of the names like Ratnamani Metal. So it's a sort of a specialized player, uh, supplies a special uh, stainless steel uh, plus carbon steel. And uh, they all, uh, so they supply to refineries plus uh, uh, also to the healthcare. So 
whatever kind of a capex what we are seeing on the cram side so they supply stainless uh, steel uh, pipes for that so i think uh, it's a company which has been maintaining good sort of uh, numbers for quite some period of time has been a performer and i think uh, has got decent amount of legs uh, to sort of perform uh, for the more uh, so we have a target price of 2300 i think uh, that is one uh, one can look at uh, the metal space uh, from a short or medium term perspective with the metal commodity prices on the rise uh, especially the metals uh, what impact do you see of this on um, auto sector because their cost could go up correct so auto has been sort of facing a lot of challenges so one is obviously the companies have been undertaking price hikes and not only auto auto but even consumer durables also but uh, in auto i think you have other challenges in terms of uh, chip uh, shortage uh, uh, which could impact so though it has not really impacted in the month of march uh, but it is expected that some of the players have been voicing concerns around that and on top of it i think the us infrastructure is also pointing towards more electrification uh, the setting up of more charging station so which would accelerate uh, the shift from uh, ic engines to uh, electric vehicles and uh, which again is a sort of a structure negative for uh, some of the auto companies because uh, they've not been spending that uh, much to sort of uh, manage the uh, shift which is expected so structurally negative uh, on auto uh, margins continue to remain under pressure so for example something like maruti you would expect margins to remain in single digits a decent time uh, margins have been in the range of over 13 14 odd percent so it is still down uh, uh, quite uh, uh, high from uh, those levels Uh, so auto continues to struggle uh, and i think uh, the struggle uh, is expected to continue for auto i think but auto ancillary players are looking better uh, from that perspective mm-hmm. i think the tire uh, entire tire has a lot or something like philips carbon black which supplies carbon black to our tire companies mm-hmm. i think amis like these uh, uh, will do a lot more better given the fact that cv cycle is also revived mm-hmm. what's your view on the paint sector bourge paint asian paint kansai narnath as uh, exon uh, nobel I mean, uh, it is an entry point uh, for somebody to really invest in the EV stocks. So I think in paints, one good thing is that uh, the crude oil prices have softened, and we have a OPEC meeting. So again, uh, I'm not expected that the crude oil prices would inch up. Uh, so crude is uh, down, and that is uh, going to obviously help. Uh, but I think the other thing is that in this entire lockdown, uh, see, in paint industry, thirty percent of the segment is unorganized and which is where uh, that segment has got impacted and as a result of that the volume growth for organized players for whether it is burger whether it is asian paints uh, so it has sort of improved and uh, so valuation aside i think uh, growth wise uh, paint as a uh, category can deliver double digit returns uh, or uh, uh, in terms of uh, volume growth rate Uh, so i think uh, only concern in uh, paint uh, or uh, a typical fmcg company is uh, the valuation otherwise i think uh, they look good from a overall uh, structural perspective and if interest rates are lower i will not be surprised if uh, valuation uh, remains intact or uh, remains at elevated level mm-hmm. so would you be a buyer in any of these stocks so ideally one should be buyer in uh, these stocks uh, in addition to that kansai is also good because uh, they have got a 50% uh, revenue coming from the auto side and if auto volume sort of uh, picks up which is what is the case i think it is a positive uh, tailwind uh, for them uh, the decorative as a segment uh, does well uh, but i think in, in paints uh, burger has been sort of doing well uh, relative to asian paints in terms of uh, growth rate so uh, we would prefer uh, burger paint over asian paints but not to say that all the paint uh, companies are looking uh, quite good uh, from overall growth perspective lots of news are flowing uh, in for itc i mean Uh, and 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 some of the brokerages have really uh, uh, you know uh, upgraded the stock and say that the target for the stock would be around some somewhere around 230 240 250 and may go up to 300 also so what's your view on itc so we also had uh, target prices of 300 on itc quite uh, uh, quite some time back but i think uh, the challenge again is uh, in terms of growth so i think market is clearly uh, uh, liking companies which are capital efficient and which can deliver growth so there is no doubt that uh, uh, itc is capital efficient business because uh, cigarette as a business is uh, extremely capital efficient but uh, growth is where uh, the challenge lies and i think if you still have issues like uh, uh, concentrated lockdown in certain uh, regions or geographies i think that does not bode well for itc in terms of volume growth and uh, i think this is one of the few segments where uh, the volume recovery has not been sort of uh, to the unexpected lines 
so both uh, uh, itc and vst i think uh, struggle from that perspective uh, 5% dividend yield is a good uh, sort of attractive uh, uh, investment argument to look at but i think uh, in a market where uh, i think growth is paramount i think uh, that is where itc sort of misses out and which is why we have turned uh, uh, from buyer or uh, from a buy rating we have uh, curtailed our rating to a hold rating on itc for upl this uh, week it was up 7.5% uh, your view on upl so upl as a stock uh, we don't cover uh, so i'll not be able to comment on uh, upl okay so um, let's talk talk about uh, telecom space now bharti airtel has seen a decent correction reliance is holding on to the levels that it has been holding on idea is down to 9 925 950 levels or what should one do in a telecom space and tell tariff hikes that we have been hearing for quite a bit of time now is that imminent and do you see that happening in any time soon so at this point in time uh, the, the the subscriber addition uh, is pretty good for airtel and a little soft for uh, reliance so our sense is that uh, till the time the subscriber addition is softer for lines uh, the uh, tariff hike uh, could uh, sort of still be pushed back mm-hmm. so which is where the uh, medium term trigger for telecom sector to sort of perform is uh, missing mm-hmm. idea has its own set of challenges in terms of balance sheet uh, so uh, that uh, is not something to be chased but i think uh, for telecom one needs to look at uh, uh, more constructively from a even a slightly longer term view because uh, i think uh, 5g uh, uh, introduction uh, globally and domestically can alter uh, the entire landscape and which is where i think uh, people need to sort of look at if they are looking at telecom otherwise medium term you will have uh, your own set of challenges but uh, once you have 5g which will come and uh, uh, whether two years down the line or three years down the line or even more i think uh, telecom stocks uh, will have a lot more uh, role to play their business models will undergo a change so i think that way i think uh, one needs to look at it from uh, that perspective mm-hmm. otherwise near term medium term i think you have absence of triggers for stock to perform mm-hmm. highest ever fii flow into india in fi21 it's nearly dollar 37.6 billion do you expect this kind of a trend to continue in fi22 and if yes which are the sectors that you see attracting foreign investment so largely i think uh, uh, difficult to say whether uh, you as continue to sort of keep getting that kind of inflows because uh, if us is recovering fast or vaccination is happening fast uh, you will have a lingering concern that uh, the stimulus might sort of get withdrawn uh, a bit early but uh, largely our sense is that banking and financial services uh, get a good chunk of the uh, overall flows Uh, like i've been saying banking hasn't really done well for uh, uh, some time uh, uh, so they did sort of extremely well uh, uh, from uh, december onwards uh, but after i think in the month of march we haven't seen much of a price performance uh, and i think with uh, gst numbers like these uh, uh, which is again pointing towards a very robust set of uh, uh, economy i think it is a matter of time where uh, banking as a segment starts to sort of deliver and i think the all your tier one banks are quite uh, good uh, from that perspective uh, so i think banking and insurance uh, is expected to be the biggest beneficiary of uh, high end flows i can't really sort of uh, argue for whether it will be more or less uh, that depends on how the global setup would be but we would expect overall inflows to be good because i think economically we are expected to do quite well compared to the rest of the world what are you doing in it space uh, pankaj i mean results next week starts kicks off uh, for uh, the last quarter so what are uh, the sense what we are getting for most of the it companies is that uh, typically you will see 4 to 5% uh, dollar uh, 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 4 to 5% uh, q on q growth in terms of constant currency terms i think tcs is expected to deliver, deliver about 4.2% uh, uh, so which is a very good set of number uh, to look at and tcs will be probably the only company which will see margin expansion because they had undertaken wage hike in the month of october otherwise most of the other players are like infi also will deliver similar kind of a uh, dollar revenue growth but bottom line again uh, growth could be uh, lower largely because of uh, the wage hike which they will have to take even mid caps like uh, uh, lendin fortech my uh, mind three i think they are expected to deliver 5% q on q growth 
which is quite impressive uh, uh, so i think it uh, structurally looks uh, very positive of late it has been sort of doing well and i think uh, uh, this uh, run up is expected to sort of continue till the results uh, are out any new mid cap uh, stock or small cap uh, stock that you have identified uh, in this correction that we saw lately so i think uh, 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 in terms of stocks uh, one of them i mentioned philips carbon black can be looked at uh, then uh, knr construction looks good uh, uh, in cement uh, most of the stocks are closer to uh, lifetime highs so jk lakshmi cement looks good uh, uh, then i think uh, persistent uh, persistent system look, looks good uh, i already mentioned ratnamani metal uh, which looks good uh, with a target price of 2300 and i see uh, overall uh, pharma also sort of uh, uh, is expected to do a decent amount of bounce back so from that perspective uh, something like uh, sipla drl and sun uh, could do well markets next week so uh, we are expecting uh, nifty levels of 15100 given the broad based recovery uh, what we have seen and in fact broader markets are expected to do well uh, i think they, this week also they have done well so i think uh, largely the trend uh, of broader market doing well remains intact i think banking will uh, take some time to perform but i think except bank uh, largely all these uh, segments of pockets have been sort of doing well and i think it run up uh, is expected to continue till the result season thank you pankaj for your time thank you for being with us thank you so much